this computer. Thank you for your patience, everybody. All right. So welcome. Uh, thank you all for coming and joining us today. Uh, my name is Erin Mizzoni. I'm one of the program specialists at the University of Calgary under the Haskane School of Business um, as a program specialist within the undergrad business program, so the BCom. Um, but as part of my role, I also hold half of the uh, exchange portfolio. So um, I primarily do the Asia Pacific region and then my colleague Stacy, who's not actually with us today, um, but she covers the Europe region. Um, but I also, as part of my portfolio, have the Semester at Sea program, which we're really proud of within the Haskane School. And I'm joined today by Whitney Cohen. Um, she is going to be speaking to us shortly about some pieces about Semester at Sea specifically. Um, but before we jumped into that, I just kind of wanted to go over a few pieces about the actual international exchange program um, through the Haskane School. So some of you may have joined us earlier. We had a study abroad session session that kind of spanned the university in terms of what you can do. And ultimately, the key takeaways from that is that you can go through a university-wide exchange, or you guys have the um, extra piece of being able to go through a business exchange. And the bonus with the business exchange, there's a few of them, um, one of them being that you can take business courses, um, more so than if you were to go through your kind of the study abroad office, you can actually take our the business courses. Uh, we found that when you went through the regular study abroad office, you weren't able to access the business courses because the partners were expecting not necessarily business students, they were expecting art students and science students from all faculties. And so they were keeping the business courses closed. So for that for that reason, we created the business exchange so that you would have access to business courses. So that's one advantage. And then the other advantage is um, the funding. So <laughs> we are going to talk a little bit about funding, especially as it pertains to this specific semester at C program, um, because we've got some really great scholarships and awards available through and studentship available through our program. And then Whitney will touch on anything that Semester at Sea offers as well. So with that being said, um, why should you go abroad? So, I mean, today is really a great day. Whitney, you don't know this because you're not here, but it's about minus 15 this morning. And next week, it's going into the minus 20s overnight. So we had a lot of interest today for study abroad um, because we had a huge snowfall Tuesday and Wednesday as well. So everyone's feeling a little bit like they're ready to get out of Dodge. And uh, we are happy to facilitate. So <laughs> um, obviously, the, the weather is helping our cause. But there's also the piece of broadening your horizons, um, making your, your resume stand out, um, adding something to your degree, diversifying your degree, degree, as well as just broadening that perspective. Um, and the, the world is a big place, but there's also so many commonalities um, across the world, and it can really help you to see how we are the same and how we are different and just develop that cultural competence as well as you go along. So all kinds of transferable skills that you learn um, that we just really recommend um, the study abroad experience in order to do that. So obviously uh, the semester at sea has a very unique positioning in the sense that you would be going to something like 11 countries and three continents just in one semester. So you're going to be seeing more of the world <laughs> than the average exchange student, I would say. So yes, we'll talk about that more in detail as Whitney takes over. Um, but here's a couple of myths that I just like to address kind of at the get go. So some students really feel um, that they can't go abroad because it's going to delay their graduation. And I just want to say that as your program advisor as well, I can really work with you to make sure the courses you're taking are going to transfer over. And we do that process before you go most of the time, um, because we want to make sure that you are able to find courses that count towards your degree. 
And the way that works is most of the time, a degree, including the BCom, uh, has room for options. So most of the time, you're looking to count some of the courses you take towards those option requirements. You will pay for four courses, regardless of how many courses you take abroad. So some students take advantage of that and actually take five while they're abroad so that they bring back those five courses, but they only paid for four. So it's kind of an opportunity to grab an extra course. Um, and through the business program, you, we will allow you to take up to two of your concentration courses abroad. So depending on what you're able to find in terms of the course selection, you might be able to count it towards your concentration requirements, not just your options. Okay, so we work with you on that, something we can go over once you're accepted to the program. Um, but ultimately, the point is that you will actually not lose any time while you're abroad. Um, you're still ticking off requirements. Another piece is um, students get worried about the financials. And one of the biggest things we always tout when you're thinking about going abroad is that you will never again have the same kind of support to go abroad. <laughs> you will never again have the financial support the ad administrative support, the advisor support, um, you know, the familiar familial support from your family, um, because this is the time to do it. Basically, you've got an institution behind you, you've got two institutions behind you, the one that you are leaving from and the one you're going to or the one that you're taking the courses through. So um, there are ways to do this and and ways to fund it. Um, we do have something called the Braun Family Studentship. Um, this is meant to be for students specifically looking for the semester at sea exchange opportunity. Um, it's valued at around 15000 I've seen it go, you know, potentially a little bit higher. I've seen a $20,000. Um, so it just depends on how many students apply and you know, how many we're working with, but ultimately it's in that 15, 15 USD. So like 20 ish Canadian um, is kind of what we're looking for, what you can potentially bank on. Um, the applications for that is something that happens usually in the spring. So just for context, for timelines, applications for semester at sea are open on our end for the fall 2023 voyage and what they consider the winter 2024, or sorry, the spring 2024 voyage, which for you guys is actually the January to April timeframe. So what we consider at the university, the winter exchange, okay? Applications for that opened on November 1st and it will close January 10th, okay? That's a competitive deadline. Um, I will accept applications after that, and Whitney and I will work together to, to do that, but Whitney will speak to um, why it's better to apply earlier, and it has to do with cabin selection and all of that fun stuff, so she'll kind of speak to that in a moment, but that's kind of the context, so you're applying kind of between now and January, we're going to review your application in that February timeframe and usually let you know by end of February, and then the application for our studentship goes out in usually March, April. Um, and then our associate dean, uh, Sherry Weevil, will look over those um, applications. It's essentially some essay questions that we want you to think thoughtfully about and answer both truthfully and thoughtfully um, so that we can consider you for the, stu the studentship. And then uh, finally, you don't speak the language. Well, <laughs> the good news about this one is that all of the courses are in English, and that is actually the vast majority of most of exchange opportunities. Um, semester at sea is definitely all English classes. Um, if you are going to a variety of, of different countries, Whitney can kind of speak potentially to um, what that looks like. But ultimately, the majority of people you're going to be working with and working alongside are going to be English speaking. Okay, so the semester at sea for sure is, uh, is one of the most English speaking, I would say. Um, the other opportunities, they may have a language requirement, but generally speaking, um, just having the basics, uh, even something, you know, as, as easy as Duolingo can give you a little bit of, of background and enough background to move along. Okay, 
So um, I think the next piece is just what's next. Applications are open, like I mentioned. So the application is open as of November 1st. Deadline is January 10th, so I mentioned that already. Um, I'm going to leave it to Whitney to go into details about hers and the scholarship opportunities on her side. But the last thing I wanted to say was on the application, we do ask you for a list of courses. The only reason we put that there is because we want you to start thinking about courses. But I really want to stress that it can be very tentative. It does not mean that you are committing to these courses. And if you don't take these courses, then you're hooped. Um, just start thinking about courses. Go on the website for the semester at sea, look at the courses they have been offering and potentially are offering this coming year if those are out yet. Um, and just take a look and see if there's something that speaks to you, something that interests you. Those can be listed as um, some courses that you're thinking about taking. And really, just from our perspective, it's so that we know that you have started thinking about this. OK, so that's kind of the main pieces I wanted to cover. I did that really quickly, um, but I will open it up. We will open it up for questions after. Um, so if you guys can just kind of hold on to your questions, I'm going to turn it over to Whitney. I'm going to stop sharing um, and just turn it over to Whitney. So there I'm going to stop sharing. Um, Whitney will bring up her presentation. And then, like I said, we will definitely have a question period um, at the end because that was kind of the main piece for this. So take it away Whitney perfect well thank you so much Erin for the introduction I appreciate it and I learned a lot as well so that was useful for me too I do wonder what hooped means though I'm not familiar with that expression but it doesn't sound good <laughs> yeah but in any case um, thank you all so much for joining us for this uh, session today I hope it was helpful for learning about all the different study abroad opportunities that you have through the Haskane College of Business there are certainly a lot to choose from and I'm very honored to be here today as one of those many options for um, having a really great partnership with uh, excuse me with the University of Calgary you might see my cat jump in here in a second he's waiting for his dinner <laughs> um, but I'm going to go ahead and get started with telling you a little bit more about semester at sea and again, my name is Whitney Cohen, and I am our Regional Director of Admissions for Semester at Sea, and I work with all of our international student applicants. So since you're coming from Canada, we would consider you to be international student applicants. Uh, my home office is in Michigan, so I am just about two and a half hours or so from the, the Sarnia uh, border crossing, so not so very far away from Ontario, at least. <laughs> Uh, so Semester at Sea, our parent organization is the Institute for Shipboard Education, which is a nonprofit organization. And we do have an academic partner that helps to provide the coursework that we have on our voyages. So Colorado State University is our academic partner. And at the end of your semester, we will be sending an official transcript to the University of Calgary. And that's how the transfer credit process will start is we'll send that official transcript from Colorado State at the end of your voyage. And then those credits will be transferred into the University of Calgary so that you can get credit for the courses that you've taken during your voyage. As Erin was mentioning, um, over the course of your voyage, you typically visit between 10 and 12 different countries. And in each of those countries, you usually spend about four to six days on average, depending on how the itinerary works out. So it's not just a quick little two day weekend trip, you're spending at least four to six days or so in each of those countries. So that does give you time to travel and see all the things that you're wanting to see and get, a good, get good experiences in those countries before you travel on to the next one. And Semester at Sea has actually been around since 1963. We're a very well-established program, and that's how we're able to have more than 70,000 alumni around the world, because we've been around since the 1960s. Uh, so our campus, now our campus is essentially a floating university. The MV World Odyssey is our ship, which you saw at the beginning of this presentation, and I'll show you quite a bit throughout the course of these slides. Um, the MV World Odyssey is our campus. So you'll find most everything on our campus that you would expect to find on a typical land-based campus, except in a smaller form, um, with the exception of, say, you know, a football pitch and things like that. So we have classroom spaces, we have dining halls, we have snack bars, a library, we have a theater, a medical clinic, counseling center. Again, pretty much everything you would expect to find on a typical land-based campus. A few additional things that we have are a spa, for example. So if you need to get your hair cut or you're wanting to treat yourself and get your nails done or a massage or something like that, we do have that available on board the ship. Um, we still have a sports court and a pool deck as well. So lots of really great facilities on board the ship for you to use. The ship is your home for the whole semester. 
These are just some photos of the different facilities, but I do encourage you to look us up on YouTube. The videos give you a much, much better um, idea of what the ship actually looks like. So you can see the pool deck over here. So if you're wanting to study because it's nice and warm outside and it's not minus 20, you can go ahead and study outside between your classes. You can eat your meals outdoors if you would like. So really, really great facilities for you on board the ship. This is one of our one of our lounge spaces here, um, as well as the library. We do have plenty of reference materials for you on board the ship for the classes that you'll be taking. And we've got a couple of photos of our cabins. So the cabins are actually the rooms, like the dorms that you're living in on board the ship, but we use the nautical term. So you're not staying in a dorm or a room, you have a cabin on board the ship. And so we have interior cabins. You'll notice there's no window right here. So those are our least expensive cabins. And then we also have cabins that do have windows that are on the exterior side of the ship. And so those are a bit more expensive of an option. And I'll go into the cost in detail, don't worry. So in our cabins, you might have one roommate like this, or you might have two roommates. So there's three beds. It just kind of depends on whether your priority is to have a lower cost cabin, or if your priority is to have a window, you can get to choose. And this is our sports court when it's in basketball mode. It can also be put into volleyball mode and a couple of other different options too. This is one of our dining halls. And then we have a campus bookstore on the ship. So you can buy you know, books that you might need, but also all of your SAS, your semester at sea gear as well. And then this is one of the snack bars that's out by the pool. But again, definitely take a look at our YouTube page. Those videos are gonna give you a lot better idea of what our um, ship actually looks like. And if we have time at the end, I'll kind of show you where you can find some of those videos. So the community on board the ship is by far the most impactful part of a voyage. For any of the students that you talk to that have been on semester at sea, you might think, oh gosh, you know, their favorite part's going to be this country or that country that they went to. But without a doubt, the most common response that I hear from students that have sailed with us is the community that was formed on board the ship had the most impact on them by far. So who is a part of that community? So we usually have about 500 or so students on board the ship and they can often represent 250 or more universities. So if you do the math, it's very, very common actually for there to be only one or maybe two students from each of these universities. And then we have a couple of universities that we've been working with for a long time that might send a cohort of 10, 20, 30 students or something like that. But it's super common to be even the only student from your university. So there's nothing to worry about if you're the only um, University of Calgary student on board the ship. There's going to be a ton of other students that are also the only, you know, the only student from their university. In addition to students, we also have all the faculty and staff members. So the professors that are teaching your classes, they will be on board the ship. And so will all of the staff members. So that means the academic dean, the student life dean. That also means our um, resident directors. So these are the folks that are helping you if you have any issues with your housing. These are our doctors, our nurses, our mental health counselors. We have all kinds of staff um, available for you on board the ship. And they can bring their families too. So you will see spouses and children of the different faculty and staff members. So it's not uncommon to have, you know, a 10 year old sitting at the breakfast table with their parents because that's, you know, your econ professor um, who's right across from you. So we have folks of all ages on board the ship in addition to our lifelong learners. Our lifelong learners are um, folks that are typically retirement age, so maybe in their 60s or older, that are really interested in traveling, but they want to do it in more of an educational environment as opposed to, you know, a cruise or some a regular cruise or something like that. So lifelong learners are folks that you might see sitting in the back of the classroom, listening in on your classes. You can have meals with them because they'll be eating in the dining halls. They're going to be going on the same student trips that you can purchase as well. So the lifelong learners are a really important part of our community too. Um, if you're you know, homesick for your parents or your grandparents, or you're just looking to learn from somebody who's already had a really long successful career in the industry that you're planning to go into, the lifelong learners can be a really great resource for you as well. Um, and then finally, we have our crew members. So we have about 200 international crew members that come from all over the world. And they are the ones that are keeping the ship going, the ones that are doing the cooking, the cleaning, and making sure that everybody stays safe and making sure that this voyage can actually happen. Um, so thank you very much to all of our international crew members that make the voyages a reality for everybody else on board the ship. And so now to academics. So when you are actually on board the ship, when it's traveling from one country to another, that's when you're going to be taking your classes. You're only taking your classes and doing your studying when the ship is at sea. Then when you arrive in a country, when we're in port for four to six days, 
you are off, you're exploring, you're traveling. That's kind of like your weekend. So you have to be a really, really good planner and very good at managing your time to make sure that you're getting all of your assignments and your research and your paper is done when you're on the ship or just making a plan that when you're sitting in your hostel at night in uh, you know, Casablanca, for example, that you're maybe going to be working on your paper a little bit if you need to do that um, when we're in port. But otherwise, students do try to get as much as they can done on the days when we're on the ship so that they can really fully enjoy their time in country. So on our voyages, we typically offer about 70 different um, courses or classes. So we refer to them kind of interchangeably as classes or courses. So we usually have about 70 different classes for you to choose from, from 20 to 25 different disciplines or subject areas. So, so these are some of the overall subject areas that you can choose from. Business, for example, of course, is going to be one that's really important for you. And then depending on uh, what your specialty is, perhaps you might be wanting to go our tourism and hospitality route. We'll usually have finance and marketing classes available as well and lots of different options that usually work very, very well for business students. Econ, of course, down here. Um, or if you have a minor or something like that or electives that you need to take, there's lots of other classes that you can choose from too. But you'll, of course, do that in consultation with your advisors at the University of Calgary to make sure that you're taking all those classes that would transfer back to your program. Um, now, of the classes that we offer, about two thirds of them are upper division classes, meaning that they're um, third or fourth year level classes, and about one third of our classes are lower division classes, so um, first and second year level classes. So whether you're looking to study abroad during your second, third, or fourth year, however it might work out, um, as long as you arrange it with your advisors, of course, we will have classes that will be the appropriate level for you. And our classes, again, are all classes that are from Colorado State University. So they're going to be um, the same as the class that you might take if you were actually going to campus at Colorado State University's campus in Fort Collins. And they are taught by a lot of actually Colorado State University professors, but we do have other professors from different universities in the US and around the world. But the curriculum that they're teaching is the Colorado State University curriculum. And that's how we're able to have a fairly smooth transfer process when we are working with all of our university partners like the University of Calgary. And so what you would do is you would actually take global studies, which is a required course for all students on board the ship. And then you would choose three or four additional courses. We typically recommending, recommend choosing only three additional courses, which would mean you're taking 12 credits total. Um, but if it's required by the University of Calgary, you could certainly take four additional classes for a total of 15 credits. So 12 to 15 credits, and there's no cost difference for that. Um, sometimes when I'm talking with students, they might say, oh gosh, you know, I regularly take 16 or 17 credits when I'm at my home campus. Of course, I want to take that many on semester at sea. But when you think about it, your class are, classes are provided in a more condensed format um, just on those days when you're on the ship so that when you're in country, you can fully enjoy it and get the most out of that time that you are spending in the country. So you don't have quite as much time um, outside of your classes as you do back on your home campus. So that's why we do recommend about 12 credits. But if you need to take 15, you certainly can. So we just want students to keep that in mind. Um, our typical class size is about 20 to 25 students. And our classes meet on A days and B days. We don't have class Monday through Friday because our ship has to follow um, a very specific itinerary. So if it so happens that you are in, um, I was saying Casablanca, for example, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, then when we're at sea going from Casablanca to Valencia, Valencia, Spain is the next port, you're going to be taking your classes on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So Monday through Friday doesn't matter for you for classes. You're taking your classes on A days or B days. And so you get used to that very quickly. Um, and then as I was mentioning before, you don't have your classes when we're in ports, when we're in a country, except for field classes, which I'll talk about um, very soon. And our classes are also complemented by interport lecturers. So these are professors, um, guest professors who get on board the ship in one port, and then they do some presentations and lectures, and then they get off the ship in the next port. So they're just guests for one leg of the journey um, and telling you about what's going on in their particular country. And then when we reach that country, they get off and they go home. Um, whereas the professors that are teaching all of your regular classes, they and their families are with you for the entire voyage. So we've got all kinds of different ways to supplement your learning on board the ship. And so global studies, as I was mentioning, is required for all students on board the ship, and it does help prepare you for each of the countries that you'll be traveling to on board the voyage. So when you get to each country, you're already going to have a really solid background knowledge about the country and what to expect. 
And then after you finish in each country, you actually get together in small groups and you do post-port reflection. So you can kind of unpack what you observed and experienced and what you learned when you were in each of those countries and then prepare for the next country. Um, so field classes are required for each of the three additional classes that you're going to take. A field class is kind of like a miniature faculty-led program in that your professor has been doing all of the planning and you and your professor and the other students in your class are going to travel um, in that country and visit different businesses or organizations or schools, depending on what the class is. And you're going to be seeing in real life what you've been learning about back on the ship from your textbooks, from your professor, um, from your lectures. So each of those three additional classes that you take will have a field class that's already incorporated into the voyage. There's no additional cost for this. It's already part of your tuition cost, but it is worth 20% of your final grade. So you can't miss your field um, your field class in Casablanca because you had a camel trek already scheduled in Morocco. You have to go to the field class, it's required. And the field classes are usually scheduled at either the beginning, the beginning or the end of your time in that country so that you can still spend the time in between um, traveling around and seeing all the things that you would like to see. So a couple of examples, for example, I'll just focus on the business one. We had an international business management class that went and visit, visited Adidas's headquarters in Ho Chi Minh City when the ship visited there a um, couple of years back. So that's just kind of one example of what a field class might be. And now for additional ways that you can travel when you're in port, we also have field programs. So field programs are trips that Semester at Sea staff members have planned for you. And if you would like to purchase one of these additional optional trips, you are more than welcome to. It's not required though. We have everything available from say a few hour cooking class or a half day city tour, all the way up to a three night, um, three night trip in Croatia where you're visiting different national parks and staying in hotels. And so they can range from you know 40 or 50 US dollars all the way up to well over a thousand US dollars. So these are totally optional. You can choose to take part in these field programs or not. You can choose to take part in the less expensive ones, the more expensive ones, it's totally up to you. Then in addition, we also have independent travel. So this is what a lot of our students get really excited about. You can always choose to travel independently. And this means that you are in charge of creating the itinerary. So you have to do all the research, figure out where you want to go, how you're going to get there, where you're going to sleep at night, where are the places that you're gonna eat your food um, and how are you gonna get back to the ship on time? So it's really exciting to be able to plan um, independent trips as well. So during the course of the voyage, you'll probably find a good travel buddy or two or three. And once you've got that good travel group together, it's pretty cool the kinds of trips that, that you can put together um, within all those countries that we're visiting. And you can always return to the ship. The ship is your home for the entire semester. So what a lot of our students do, especially students that are more budget conscious, is in some ports, they might only plan day trips. So say you might go to a town that's within a train or a bus ride from the port city and then come back to the ship that night have your dinner on the ship, sleep on the ship so that you're not having to pay um, for dinner at a restaurant or pay for a hotel or a hostel that night. So you can always use the ship um, like a hotel when we're in port. And of course, there's no extra charge for that because again, it's your home for the whole semester. So there's a lot of different ways for you to travel. Most of our students will do a combination. Maybe they might do some field programs towards the beginning of the voyage when they're not quite sure how to plan their own trip. Maybe they'll do some more independent travel as you get later on into the voyage. So it's totally up to you. Um, so you have a lot of flexibility and a lot of ways that you can see the most, um, see as much as you like in each of those countries where we go. These are some examples of field programs that we've done in the past. I always love mentioning the, the camel trek in Morocco, of course. And I know Aaron had uh, pictures of camels from another study abroad program too. So <laughs> I was excited to see that, um, especially if you're trying to escape from the winter as well. This is always a really fun one to show. Uh, we're not able to do homestays at the moment just because of COVID concerns, but we're hoping to bring those back in the future. It would be like a one or two night stay with a local family in one of the port cities. So those are on pause for right now, but we're hoping to bring them back in the near future because they're super impactful but there's always lots of different um, field programs for you to choose from. And as far as shipboard life, because you will be spending a little more than 50% of your time on board the ship and a little less than 50% of your time on land exploring, you probably want to know what your life is going to be like living on board the ship, right? And so um, on the ship, we have a ton of different student clubs and organizations for you to join, probably just like you have at the University um, of Calgary. We're going, we always have at the beginning of the semester, um, a student organization fair. So you can walk around and learn about the different student organizations, sign up for them. Or if there's something that you are really wanting to do um, or a club that you're wanting to join and we don't have it, 
you can start your own student organization on campus mm -hmm. too. Um, I learned, gosh, what was it? It was either called, I think it was the chocolate club. Something like that was started on our spring 2022 voyage for students who really love chocolate. And so they made it a point to buy a lot of chocolate candies and things like that. When they were in each country, they brought them back to the ship. They traded them, all kinds of stuff. So if there's kind of a niche thing that you're interested in connecting with other students about, you can start your own club too. So there's lots and lots of options. And then we also have some more um, more things that are specific to semester at sea. Again, keeping with kind of the nautical traditions, uh, we have Neptune Day, the Sea Olympics, the Alumni Ball, all kinds of different things. Uh, the Sea Olympics are when you and the other students that are in the um, cabin area where you live, you're divided up into teams. And the teams are all seas, S-E-A, seas. So we have like the Bering Sea, the Adriatic Sea, the Yellow Sea, the Black Sea, and I think the Red Sea. And those are our five teams, essentially. And so you're competing against one another. You can see we've got purple, orange, red, and blue right here in a bunch of different activities like tug of war, synchronized swimming. Um, there's all kinds of different activities that you can do to see which sea is going to come out on top. And then Neptune Day is typically on voyages where we cross the equator. There's some kind of maritime traditions that we've really mellowed down a lot um, because the actual traditions are much more like hazing and ours are optional and they're not hazing at all. Um, so you have the choice if you would like to get a free haircut um, and have all your hair shaved off because that's a tradition that like U.S. sailors and things like that, they would have to get their hair shaved as part of this nautical tradition. But we have it as an option if you would like. You can kiss a fish. Uh, that's another thing. And then there's also one of the faculty or staff members that dresses up like um, King Neptune as well. So there's all kinds of funny things that happen on Neptune Day. There's an alumni ball towards the end of the, toward the end of the voyage. And then we have regularly have film screenings. So movies that are shown because there is a theater on board the ship. Taco night is always very popular um, on board the ship. They usually try and have that at least a couple times. And then stargazing nights are super, super cool. So if you can imagine on a sea day, when the ship is out sea, or nighttime rather, the ship is out at sea, it's nighttime, you can't really see land, maybe there aren't other ships close by, the captain, so long as it's safe and it's not a very cloudy night, can turn off the outward facing lights, except for some safety lights, so that you have a really, really good view of the night sky and the stars. So it's a super cool way um, for you, or just kind of a super cool thing that you can't really do on other study abroad programs, unless you're maybe out in the middle of nowhere, or high up in the mountains, but the stargazing nights are really cool um, on board the ship. And then now for back to the more business end of things, we've got the program fees and the aid. And so the first um, slide that I have here are our costs, and then I'll get into the scholarships. And don't worry, there's a lot of scholarships and financial aid that I'm going to be sharing with you. Um, sticker shock is a real thing, of course, especially with the current exchange rate between US dollars and Canadian dollars. But I'll explain what's included in our program fees and then how you can reduce those program fees because they can be reduced significantly. So included in our program fees, we have tuition, of course, for 12 to 15 credits. And that also includes those field classes that you'll be taking um, in three countries also. Your housing, so your cabin is included as well as all of your meals. So that's breakfast, lunch, and dinner on board the ship, plus a late night snack too. Don't wanna miss the late night snack. And then you have to factor in that there's travel to about 10 different countries. So when you're on board the ship, we're bringing you to all of those different countries. And these days it's quite expensive. It was always expensive, but even more so these days with the cost of fuel. So we do factor in the fuel fee. Um, and then also health insurance is included. That's very important, health and travel insurance. And then all the advisement and support of the staff members that we have on board the ship. So we've got two different columns here. The one is for our standard cabin and the second is for a premium cabin. So if you choose a standard cabin, that means one of our um, cabins where it's on the interior side of the ship where there's no window. That cabin is going to cost about um, or eight thousand U.S. dollars, whereas a premium cabin that's on the outside of the ship and does have a window, that one would cost eleven thousand U.S. dollars. Otherwise, all the other costs are the same. Tuition is the same. The fuel fee is the same. So your total cost comes out to about thirty-two thousand U.S. dollars for the standard cabin, or about thirty-five thousand U.S. dollars for the premium cabin. And again, it includes all of this right here. And this cost is before you factor in any financial aid or scholarships, either from us or from the University of Calgary. So 60% of our voyagers do receive some form of financial aid. So the majority of our students are receiving some kind of financial help to be able to um, join our voyage. So don't worry if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to be the only student receiving financial aid. Nope, definitely not. The majority of our students do receive financial aid of some sort. 
So these are many of the funding options that are available for you. In addition to some of the opportunities uh, that Aaron was mentioning earlier, like the Braun Family Foundation and things like that, we have our own financial aid that you can apply for as well. So we have need and merit-based grants. Uh, Need-based grants are based on your family's income. So as part of our, part of all our financial aid application process, you'd be submitting information about how much um, your family or your, your parents or your guardian make. And then we would take that into consideration when deciding the amount of the need-based grant that you would receive. Similarly, we do have merit-based grants as well, and those are based entirely on your academics, so your grades from the University of Calgary. So when you apply, we'll help you to convert your grades to a US GPA, so you can figure out um, what amount of a merit-based grant you would receive. So the need-based and the merit-based grants, they are not competitive, so they're depending entirely upon your family's income and then your grades. It doesn't matter what the income or the grades of the person next to you are, you're not competing against each other for these need and merit-based grants. It's based only on your own um, financial and academic background. Um, then we also have student assistant grants, and these are like jobs that are available on board the ship. These ones are competitive because there are only a limited number of these jobs available on board the ship and a lot of students that apply for them. Um, so you can apply for a job such as working in our writing center, working in the computer lab, helping the um, field programs office that's planning all those different trips um, on land. There's a lot of different um, types of positions and you can apply for one. And if you do receive one of these student assistant grants, it's a $4,000 reduction of your program fee. So that's great, but it is competitive. Um, Pell Grant matches, that's something for um, US students. And then any university aid from the University of Calgary or scholarships that you might be able to transfer to. And of course, Aaron's going to be your person for more details about that. So you can kind of see that as you start to factor in semester at sea financial aid and University of Calgary scholarships and opportunities, that's going to help reduce your cost quite a bit. Um, then there might also even be additional scholarships that you can apply through through other Canadian organizations or provincial organizations too that might be able to go towards studying abroad. And then we also have payment plans as well. So if you apply in advance, and we do recommend as much as possible applying about 12 months in advance so that you have enough time to make sure that you get your funding in order, um, you can actually apply for or use a payment plan if you would like. So that way your family does not have to pay your fees all at once. It can be broken up into monthly payments. So that's another good reason to apply as early as possible. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and I have this photo here because these gals here, um, they attended a university in Kansas and they decided to start a little business on the side in order to help fund their out-of-pocket expenses for their voyage. So they actually designed and created these headbands here and they sold them on their campus um, and then to family members and friends as well, even sold some on the ship. And that's how they were able to raise funds for their remaining expenses for their voyage. So students can get creative sometimes as well. Um, so the sky is the limit. There's lots and lots of ways to fund your voyage. And depending on time, I can also screen share and show you some of the many different scholarships that we have available. It's just too many to put on a slide, <laughs> but we have them all on our website. And as far as how to apply, we do have a very straightforward online application. You have to be enrolled full time in a degree granting institution like the University of Calgary, and you have to have at least a 2.5 cumulative GPA. And so I would help um, convert your grades um, from the University of Calgary to a US style GPA as part of the application process. So you wouldn't need to worry about that. And you do need to have completed at least 12 credits. So essentially at least one semester, that's our requirement. But of course you would want to go with the University of Calgary's requirement because not all universities um, allow first year students to study abroad. So you wanna check with your study abroad office on that. And you have to be in good academic standing and not on disciplinary probation at the time of the voyage, of course. So for your unofficial transcript, all you would do is just take a screenshot or download a copy of your transcript from your UCalgary student portal, and you would upload that with your online application. And then we also have a 300 to 500 word optional essay um, that you can submit as well. And for students that are attending schools in Canada, we do not require you to provide an English language proficiency test because your curriculum at the University of Calgary is already in English, so you don't have to worry about that requirement. I'm gonna skip summer at sea for now. And that brings me kind of to the end of this presentation here. And it looks like we're doing pretty well on time. Erin, is it okay if I share my screen and show um, some things from our website just so students know where to find things? Sure, yeah, go go for it. It's funny you say that because I was just bringing up my own website as well. So <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and then I'll follow you um, 
depending on how long you take and we'll go from there. Sure. Sounds good. Okay. I'll be quick then. So this is our main application. You can just Google semester at sea or type in semester at sea.org and then all of our voyages will come up. So here you can scroll down and see the different voyages that we have. The fall 22 voyage, of course, is currently underway right now. The spring 23 voyage is going to be happening in January. And then the voyages you would likely be looking at are fall 2023 and spring 2024. These are the two voyages that we are currently accepting applications for. We have not yet launched any um, applications beyond spring 2024 just yet. So say, for example, you're really interested in fall 2023, you just click it right here, and then you'll be brought to the voyage page and you can see exactly where you'll be going. Scroll down and we've got our lovely voyage map. Um, we do always put the little caveat out there that the itinerary might change. And that's always been the case even before COVID. But currently with COVID restrictions, it's looking like we might need to change some of our final ports in this region here. So if that's the case, we'll announce it. That happened for this current voyage as well. So instead of going to um, South and East Asia, we ended up going from uh, Oman down to, in, excuse me, down to Kenya instead. And then after India, ending up in Dubai. So there's still a lot of really cool places that we can go, even if we end up needing to change the voyage. Um, but I want to show you this voyage page because this is where you can find out about the courses. It's where you can see the calendar for the program. It's where you can apply as well, but you'll definitely want to talk to Aaron first before you um, submit a semester at C application. So if we wanted to look at the courses for fall 2023, we would just click the lovely orange tab right there, and then we would scroll down so you could see the classes that are available. So again, global studies, everybody takes. But if you're wanting to see our business classes, you just scroll right down, see a couple of business classes that we've got offered. You can scroll down and see there's some econ classes. And then at the end, I know we've got a couple of more management. There we go. Marketing classes. And then at the very, very end, we have our hospitality um, type courses. And I think maybe even, okay, yeah, so hospitality and tourism classes. So quite a few that should be available um, for your programs, depending on what you're specializing in. And we haven't yet posted all of our fall 2023 classes yet. So there's still going to continue to be more that are added as well. Um, and how it would usually work is for one of the classes, you would click on it, and then there would be a syllabus that's posted down here. It's a bit too early for the syllabi to be posted just yet, but there would be a nice orange button. We like orange buttons so that you could download the syllabus. And that's what you would need to use when um, working with your department to get your pre-approvals for course transfer. And the last thing I wanted to show you is just our financial aid page. So this is where we have more information about our scholarships and our financial aid. And if you scroll down, you can see all of the different scholarships that you can apply for. So there are quite a lot for you to choose from. So you can see why I didn't put them all on that, uh, that slide. It would have been too much. But there's a lot on our website that you can look at, even the student cabins and, and things like that. But I don't want to take up too much more time, Erin. I think I'll, I'll pass it back to you so you can show what you want to do on, on your page as well. Amazing. Thank you so much, Whitney. I really appreciate you joining us today. Um, I will be quick so that we can open it up to questions as well. Um, I just wanted to show you guys the eligibility on our end. Um, so the, the next steps really, hopefully Whitney has got you just totally stoked and you're like, I'm doing this, let's do it. Um, so the next steps is kind of reviewing eligibility and then depending on whether you're looking at this year or next, and by next, I mean like fall of 2024. So our current application um, portal is open and it's really meant for if you plan on going either in fall of 2023 or what would be considered at the University of Calgary winter of 2024, okay? For Whitney's purpose, that's a spring 2024 voyage, okay? So um, those are open right now. And ultimately what we're looking for you to have completed is about 20 courses or so towards your BCom. So you're kind of gonna be cresting into third year when you go on your exchange. So you do not have to have completed it now when you look at applying, but by the time you go, ideally you would have completed about 20 courses, three of your 317s, okay? We strongly recommend NT and MGST 391, not required, but we strongly recommend it. And then we also look for just a little bit higher of a GPA. However, Whitney clarified that cumulative, she's comfortable with you having 2.5. Um, 
2.9 for us is a little bit higher than than that, I believe, even with the with the conversion. Um, so we can consider a little lower, but ultimately we are kind of looking for just that little touch higher um, performance in your guys' courses. But please come and talk to us. We don't want to dissuade you, okay? So let's talk about it because, again, this is at the time of sailing, essentially, not necessarily at the time of application, okay? So next steps for you guys um, is to ask questions, but also, um, you know, to consider submitting that application and or meeting with myself or Whitney or both um, to have more conversations about what this looks like going forward. Um, but the application on our end, just so you know what it looks like, you would apply through RAZA, which is a program um, through the university um, website, but essentially you can go through this area um, and submit your application. So we're at Haskane. Um, and so you can submit an application and then I will actually send out a questionnaire for you to fill out as well. It's sort of like an interview, but it's um, written. And then we'll get back to you, like I said, sometime in February about your acceptance, at which points you would then reach out and apply um, through Whitney. Um, and you would apply through the semester at sea, just like Whitney showed you through them. So the idea is that you solidify an application with us first, and then you would apply for the semester at sea through their website. Okay. If you don't remember anything else, remember that piece. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop share. I'm going to stop the recording, and then everyone else can feel free to ask questions. The only thing I will say, um, just to finish, is I'm going to put my email or our the exchange email in the chat. So feel free to reach out to me um, if you want the recording of this session if you came in later. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, I'm happy to answer them even afterwards. Uh, but I will open it up and stop talking. So we've got seven minutes. Uh, please feel free to ask your questions. Thank you so much.